Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and in this one we are going to be focusing on engine knock and pre-ignition. What are they? What's the difference between the two? What causes it? How do you know if your engine's knocking? And what can you do to fix it? So before we get into all of that, it's good to start with a quick overview of how a four-stroke engine works. So very quick, we have four different stages in a four-stroke engine. We have our intake phase, compression phase, ignition, and exhaust. And what I've tried to go ahead and do here is draw roughly what the cylinder inside of an engine looks like. So you're gonna have your cylinder here in black with your intake and exhaust ports. We have our intake valve and our exhaust valve there in blue. We have the actual piston there as well. So with the intake stroke, what's happening is the piston is coming down with the intake valve open. So this draws in your air and fuel mixture here in green into the cylinder. We then move to the compression stroke where the intake valve has now closed, creating a seal. The piston is being forced back up and this is compressing all of that air and fuel that you just drew in. We then have the ignition phase where our spark plug here in the top of the cylinder fires off and this begins to burn some of the air and fuel mixture in a very precisely designed wave front that should be very smoothly pushing the piston back down through the cylinder, creating the power within the engine. And then we have the exhaust phase where after all of our air fuel mixture is burned up, all of that exhaust gas is then pushed back up through the open exhaust valve and this then gets pushed back out of the engine. So now let's talk about pre-ignition and knock. These are fairly similar concepts in the sense that it's an unplanned burning of some of the air fuel mixture within the engine uh, in a much less controlled manner than you would normally get if you were to fire it off with your spark plug. Um, this can lead to increased cylinder pressures. Um, if it's bad enough, it can lead to instant failure of the engine. Um, but if it's also done repeatedly over time, it can also lead to highly increased wear and ultimately your engine is gonna end up having problems down the road. So it's important to understand what these are, how to detect it and how to correct it if you end up running into issues with knock or pre-ignition. So with pre-ignition, this is something that happens before the ignition phase, before the spark plug is fired. Um, this can occur from a damaged spark plug. If your coil pack or your spark plug is malfunctioning, sometimes it can go off at the wrong time before it's supposed to. So you end up igniting some of that air and fuel mixture before the piston has even finished rising up, which is pretty bad. Um, it can be caused by carbon or lead deposit buildups within the cylinder or on the piston. Um, if these get heated up enough, they begin to glow and it'll act as a glow plug. Um, it'll be so hot that it'll actually fire off um, that air fuel mixture before you actually set your spark plug off. Um, it can also be caused by engine overheating. If your engine is getting way too hot, it could lead to some of these components getting hotter than it's supposed to. And again, that can cause some of that air fuel mixture to burn prematurely. Um, and then it can also be caused by superheated exhaust valves. So if there's something wrong with your engine um, or if you're running a flame map, you could end up overheating your exhaust valve. And if that exhaust valve gets too hot, once again, it'll set off some of the air fuel mixture within the cylinder prematurely, and that's not good. So now let's talk about detonation or knock. Um, the term knock gets its name from the fact that knock tends to have a very distinct pinging noise or a knock sound, um, but it's a little bit different from pre-ignition in the sense that it happens after your spark plug is already fired. So when your spark plug fires, you begin to get that flame front coming down that's supposed to push the engine down very smoothly. Um, and it does lead to increased pressure and temperature in some of the unburned air and fuel mixture that's in here. Um, and that increased pressure and temperature can sometimes lead to a small pocket of air and fuel getting burned off in an explosive manner that wasn't unplanned. Um, this leads to more of a knock instead of a controlled pushing of the piston. Um, so this can be caused by bad fuel. If you're running fuel that is lower octane than your car is designed for, um, then this can lead to problems with knock because that fuel is not intended to be run at those pressures or temperatures. Um, so this is typically for like higher compression engines, like if, in, for instance, in my 370Z, you're supposed to run 93 octane because it's a high compression motor. Um, so if I were to put 87 in there and then try and take off, the less stable fuel that is in 87 octane might have issues with the high compression rates that are within my engine, so it may end up setting off fuel prematurely. Um, another thing that can cause this is the engine running a little bit lean. Now this can be caused by a couple of things. It could be failing injectors. It could be your fuel pump is beginning to fail and it's not putting out the correct fuel pressure. Um, it could be a bad AFR sensor. So your cars are equipped with air fuel ratio sensors that essentially measure how much air and fuel is being burned within your engine. It detects this through the exhaust side. 
Um, and if it's reading incorrectly, it may tell your engine to try and run a little less fuel. And if it's below optimal point, if you have more air than you do fuel, um, it can lead to knock for a couple of reasons. First off, fuel does help cool the intake temperatures a little bit within the uh, air fuel mixture, um, which kind of helps prevent knock from occurring. But if it's lean, it also means that your air fuel mixture is gonna burn at a different rate. So sometimes this can mean that that uh, little flame front um, can end up coming down onto the piston a little bit sooner than it's supposed to. Um, so this can also lead to knock. So running lean is another cause. Um, overheating, once again, for similar reasons here, if your engine's running too hot, um, as you're beginning to go through the ignition phase, you can get detonation due to some of that air fuel mixture hitting its auto ignition point prematurely. These next two bullet points are really only important if you've heavily modified your engine and or you've taken it in recently to get it tuned. So too much compression can lead to problems with knock. Um, if you have changed the type of piston that you're using um, or you've purposely somehow changed the compression ratio of the engine, this can lead to issues with auto ignition of your fuel. This is also a problem if you've put on a turbo or supercharger, you're gonna be forcing more air into that cylinder, which means you're gonna be getting higher pressures. So it's really important after you have done modifications like that to take it in and get it tuned properly. And then if you have taken it in to get it tuned, there is a risk that your tuner might end up advancing your timing too much. Sometimes tuners will just copy and paste a tune on there and assume that it's gonna work with your car, but all engines are gonna be a little bit different. So if they're running too much timing, it could mean that your spark plug is firing way before it should be, and then the pressures in here are just becoming too great and then you're getting issues with that auto ignition. So it's really important to work with your tuner to make sure that they're tuning the car up properly. And I'm gonna talk about this in a separate video. So how do you detect if your engine is knocking? Well, ideally you would have a pressure sensor installed somewhere within the cylinder, but cars aren't equipped with this from the factory and it would be very difficult or even impossible to modify it to be able to install one. So this really isn't a practical way of doing it. So cars nowadays are equipped with something called a knock sensor. A knock sensor is a piezoelectric device that detects vibrations from the engine on a certain frequency and uses a shunt resistor to convert this to an electrical signal. Essentially, it is just a microphone that's tuned to a certain frequency that's related to knock. And if the engine detects that there's too much noise from that frequency above a point called the knock threshold, then it labels the event as a knock event. And most cars nowadays are equipped with the ability to pull your timing back a couple of degrees to prevent additional knock events from happening. Um, if you have the Ecutech data logger or if you have data logging capabilities from UpRev, you can actually log your knock threshold and your knock data to see if you're getting knock events from your car. Most people, however, probably don't have this, so you can actually just look for a check engine light. If your car sees that there's a bunch of knock events occurring, it'll simply just throw a check engine light up and tell you that you're having misfires, and at that point, you know you need to try and service your engine. However, if your car is not equipped with a knock sensor or your knock sensor is malfunctioning, you're not gonna see a check engine light for this. In this case, to know if your engine's knocking or not, you have to listen for the distinct noise that engine knock makes. It usually sounds like a bit of a ping. Um, I'm gonna play a few sound clips for you guys here so that you know what engine knock sounds like. However, listening for knock can be pretty impractical, especially if your engine only knocks under heavy load whenever you're, for instance, accelerating really quickly. It's difficult to listen for knock when you're in the cabin. Um, or perhaps the engine from the factory already makes tick noises. Fuel injectors, for instance, can sometimes be pretty noisy. Um, but if you do notice some sort of tick or ping noise that wasn't there originally, this might be an indication that your car is knocking. And then the only other way that you can really know is if you do a visual inspection of your cylinder walls and of your piston. Um, this can be pretty impractical for most if you're not very familiar with working on engines. Uh, but the easiest way to do this would be to take out your spark plug and then you can send in an endoscope and then take a look around, see if there's any burn spots or any very clear visual damage to the cylinder walls or the piston, which is an indication that there is knock occurring. So if you find that your car is suffering from pre-ignition or knock, what can you do to try and fix it? Well, the easiest thing to do is to go through the list here and try and see what could possibly be causing it. So in both cases, you wanna make sure that your engine's not overheating. Take a look at your temp gauge, make sure that your coolant temperature is looking good. You might wanna visually inspect and make sure that you've actually got coolant in the reservoir as well and that it's above the minimal line. 
So once you know that your engine's not overheating, one of the next easiest things you can do is see if running a little bit higher octane fuel can help. So if you normally run regular 87 unleaded, you may wanna try running 93 octane, for instance. Higher octane fuels are sometimes needed to try and help prevent some of these knock issues from occurring. If higher octane fuel doesn't work, you may wanna take a look at your spark plugs. Your spark plugs might be damaged at this point and might need to be replaced. And it would also be a good idea to replace your coil packs at the same time. But if that doesn't help, you may need to start looking at other issues related to your fueling system. You wanna make sure your car is not running lean. In order to do this, you're gonna to need to check your fuel pressure. Um, you may need to try and clean your injectors as well. Those are just a couple of things you can look at. Your AFR sensors could also be a potential cause here. If inspecting your fuel system shows no issues, then at that point you're really looking at an engine rebuild and you're probably gonna to have to take it off to a licensed mechanic, have them open up the engine and then visually inspect inside to see if there's any damage to the pistons or the cylinder walls that could cause this problem. Um, also, if you got your car tuned recently and you're running into knock issues, you might wanna take it back to your tuner and make sure that there's no issues with your timing. And that's gonna be it guys. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. You can also hit that subscribe button down below if you wanna see more talks like this and just wanna learn more about cars in general. So thank you guys for watching. See you all in the next video. Later.